So let's go ahead and get started. Find a comfortable seat, being sure to pull the flesh away from the sit bones so that you're starting off stable. I'm sitting in Sukhasana, which is called, um, which translates to easy pose, but it's not easy for everyone. A clue that you might have tight hips is if when you sit in Sukhasana, if your knees are up higher, um, that can be indicative of tight hips. And you find that because we sit a lot, um, runners tend to have really tight hips. Um, it just depends on what your habits are, what your physical habits are. Draw the navel in towards the spine. Allow the crown of the head to reach towards the ceiling. And then bring those shoulder blades together and down the back and place the hands on the thighs, palms down. Go ahead and close your eyes. And just start to watch your breath. Allowing that breath to flow in through the nose and out through the nose. If you start to notice that your back is slouching, create the length in the spine, draw the navel in and continue. Start to bring the breath into balance by making your inhale the same length as the exhale. So if you inhale for a count of four, you would exhale for a count of four. If you inhale for a count of six, you would exhale for a count of six and so on. And this, as I've said um, in previous classes, is called Sama Vritti breathing. And it is a form of breath control, pranayama, and it helps to bring balance and calm to our body and mind. So with each inhale, grow nice and tall. And then as you exhale, keep the length in the spine and just begin to soften the body. Relax the shoulders, relax the jaw. Let the knees gravitate towards the earth. When the breath wanders, the mind also is unsteady. But when the breath is calmed, the mind too will be still and the yogi achieves long life. Therefore, one should learn to control the breath. And that is from the Hatha Yoga Pradapika, which is, and I might be pronouncing that incorrectly, I apologize. That is said to be the oldest surviving text on Hatha Yoga. So that's what that's from. The ancient yogis believed that you were born with a predetermined number of breaths. So they really learned to slow the breath down, prolonging their life. So let's bring our hands together at the heart in Anjali Mudra prayer position. We'll breathe together three times and on the third exhale, we'll share the sound of Om. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. And for the third time together, inhale. Oh. Bow your head. Place the hands on the thighs. Softly open your eyes. We're going to start today on our backs. And although you don't need it yet, I will be using a strap for some of our poses, but they're definitely poses that you can do without a strap if you don't have one. So if you have one, great. If not, if you have like a long sleeve t-shirt or sweatshirt or belt nearby, you can grab that. And if you don't have anything again, it is fine because I will also teach it without the strap. So we'll lay down on our backs, extending the legs out nice and long and bringing the arms by your sides. I'm 
As you inhale, the arms come up overhead until the thumbs touch the floor behind you. And then as you exhale, arms come back down by your sides. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down. So you're moving with your breath at your own pace. The next time your arms come by your sides, pause there and then hug those knees into the chest. Once you hug them in, feel free to rock side to side, giving yourself a little back massage. And then become still and place the soles of the feet on the mat. Cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Take the hands around that left thigh, draw the legs in. Feel that stretch in the right glute, right hip. Lower the left foot, followed by the right foot, and then cross that left ankle over the right thigh. Take your hands around the right thigh, Draw those legs in towards the chest. Lower your right foot, followed by your left foot. If you have a strap, you'll grab that. If not, you won't. And then we'll all just stay laying on the ground, legs extended out nice and long. If you have your strap, you're going to hold it. After you place it around the ball of that right foot, you'll hold the reins of the strap, one in each hand. As you inhale, the right leg lifts. So if you don't have a strap, you'll just lift the right leg. Now you can use your strap to just gently pull the leg in a little closer to your face or use your hands, but we don't want to force anything. This is subtle. We're still just warming up. Lower that right leg down to the ground. On the next inhale, after you place both reins of the strap in the right hand, let's all bring the left arm out like a T, palm faces the ceiling. As you inhale, that right leg lifts. And if you're not using the strap, you can just hold onto your leg with your hand. As you exhale, the right leg opens up out to the right. So if you're using your strap, this is a chance for you to really make the practice your own. And you can choose do you want to work on flexibility or strength? Flexibility, I recommend just bringing that right leg a little more perpendicular to the trunk of the body. And then if you want to work on strength, can you just open the right hand and let the strap lay there and use these big leg muscles to keep that leg up? As you inhale, the right leg lifts and as you exhale, it cross or it lowers down to the ground. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, right leg crosses over the body as you roll over onto that left hip. So again, you have a, if you have a strap, you can hold onto that. If you don't, you don't. You can bring that leg a little more perpendicular to the trunk of the body. You could open the hand and see if you can use those leg muscles to hold the leg and breathe. Supta Padangustasana three. Slowly draw that right leg back up. As you exhale, lower it down to the ground. So now we'll switch legs. So if you're using a strap, we'll place it around the ball of that left foot. 
Reach through both heels, and as you inhale, the left leg lifts. Sole of the foot looks towards the sky. You can draw that left leg in a little closer to the body, if you'd like. And on an exhale, we'll lower the leg down to the mat. If you're using the strap, place both of the reins in the left hand. The right arm comes out like a T, palm faces the sky. As you inhale, the left leg lifts. And as you exhale, the left leg opens up out to the left. So a lot of my friends are super duper flexible and can place their foot on the floor. So if that's you, I want you to pick that foot up and hold the leg parallel to the ground. Slowly draw the left leg back up. As you exhale, lower it to the mat. On the next inhale, left leg lifts. This time, as you exhale, the left leg crosses over the body as you roll over onto that right hip. Breathe here. Slowly draw that left leg back up. As you exhale, lower the leg to the ground. You can remove the strap if you're using it. Hug the knees into the chest. So we're going to begin to rock head to tail. Coming up to seated, but then we're going to come right over the knees, or yeah, right over the knees, coming to all fours, hands and knees. So I keep talking about this um, cushion that I put under my knees. And one thing that I'm working on for you guys is I'm looking into just finding all the links to these things that I suggest in case you like it. You can research it for yourself. So let's come to all fours, hands and knees. Knees are just hip width apart. They're slightly behind the hips. Hands shoulder width apart, slightly forward of your shoulders. So we really wanna keep the weight out of the wrists. So spread the fingers nice and wide and press down through the fingers and the perimeter of the palms. Take a breath in. As you exhale, Shift your hips to your heels, your chest to your thighs, coming to child's pose. And as you inhale, come back up all fours. So we're moving with the breath. So on your exhale, shift back to child's pose. And on your inhale, come back up all fours. No need to rush. As I mentioned towards the beginning of class, emotion is said to be stored in the hips and we'll be doing an emotional awareness relaxation at the end of class. So just for a moment, just become aware of what you're feeling now, no matter what it is. And the next time you come to all fours, pause there. We're going to begin to move into downward facing dog. So from all fours, we're going to curl the toes under. Start to shift your hips towards your heels. The knees lift as you press back through the heels, coming to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Start to bend the knees, go back to go back down into child's pose. As you inhale, come back up all fours. We'll do that again. So curl those toes under. Start to shift the hips towards the heels. Knees lift as you press back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Sweep that right leg out behind you and bend the knee. Make some nice big circles with the knee.
Reverse the direction of your circles. Let the right leg become still and lower the foot to the mat. Start to bend those knees. Go back to go back down into child's pose. As you inhale, come back up all fours. Let's transition again into downward facing dog. Sweep the left leg out behind you, bend the knee. Nice big circles with that left knee. Reverse the direction of that ankle rotation or hip rotation. Let the leg become still, lower it down to the mat. Start to bend those knees, go back to go back down into child's pose. So take a moment here as I avoid a wardrobe malfunction, take a moment to bring the awareness back to that breath, back to the present moment. What are you feeling in this moment? Bring yourself back up, all fours, hands and knees. Step your right foot forward between the hands. However it gets there is fine. As you inhale, arms sweep up, hips shift forward. Lower the hands down to the inside of your right foot. Sweep the left arm up towards the sky, stacking the shoulders, opening the chest. As you exhale, lower that left hand down to the mat and begin to twist to the right, reaching the right arm up towards the sky. Lower the right hand to the inside of the right foot. You're going to heel toe your right foot over to the right two or three times. I know it's hard to see me. And then you're just going to roll to the pinky toe side of that right foot. Come back up to the bottom of that right foot. You can heel toe it back over. Bring your right hand to the outside of the right knee. Step that right knee back to meet the left. Shift back to child's pose. Bring yourself back up all fours. Step your left foot forward between the hands. As you inhale, arms sweep up, hips shift forward. Keep the left knee on top of the ankle. Don't let it jut out past the ankle. Lower the hands to the inside of that left foot. Sweep the right arm up towards the sky, stacking the shoulders, opening the chest. Lower the right hand down to the mat. Continue to twist to your left as you reach the left fingertips towards the ceiling. Lower the left hand to the inside of the left foot. Heel toe your left foot over two to three times to the left and then just roll to the pinky toe side of that left foot. Come back to the sole of the left foot, heel toe it back, bring that left hand to the outside of the left foot. Step your left knee back to meet the right and let's meet in downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, sweep that right leg out behind you. From here, you're going to bend the knee. Take that right knee towards your right wrist, your right ankle towards your left wrist. Lower the shin to the mat, uncurl the toes. Lower that left knee. If you have a block, you can wedge it under that right glute to keep you from collapsing. 
And we're going to start by walking our hands back in line with our hips. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, begin to walk those hands forward, coming down to your forearms, eventually crossing those forearms in front of you, resting your forehead, and bringing the awareness to that right hip and right glute. So this is a really deep stretch, and I find it can make you feel very vulnerable. Like, if I relax, is something going to pop apart? And no, it's not. So see if you can just relax here. Come back up onto your forearms. Place the hands right beneath your shoulders. You're going to curl the toes under on the left foot, lift the knee, and then shift back to a three-legged down dog. So that right foot sweeps up towards the sky, and then lower that right foot, coming to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Sweep the left leg out behind you, Bend the left knee. Take the left knee towards your left wrist, the left ankle towards your right wrist, lower the shin to the mat, lower the right knee, uncurl the toes. So again, if you have a block and you'd like to wedge that under the left glute, you can do that. We'll bring our hands in line with the hips, nice tall spine, shoulder blades together and down the back. And then as you exhale, Begin to walk the hands forward, coming down to those forearms, crossing the forearms in front of you, resting your forehead. Again, see if you can bring your awareness to the left glute, left hip, and just relax. Come up onto those forearms, place the hands right beneath your shoulders, curl the toes under on the right foot, the knee floats up off of the mat, and then we're going to shift back to that three-legged dog, left foot reaches towards the sky, lower it to the ground, back to downward facing dog. Start to walk your feet forward, coming to Uttanasana forward fold. Relax the head and neck here. Place your hands on your hips, press down through the feet, and come up to Tadasana Mountain Pose. As you inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold forward. As you inhale, come halfway up to a flat back. And then as you exhale, fold forward once again. Step your right foot back, followed by the left. So we're coming to plank. And you can have those knees up or down here. Inner elbows look to the space in front of you. If the knees are up, float forward to the tops of the toes. Then start to bend those elbows towards the space behind you, slowly lowering for chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising to cobra pose. Relax the shoulders away from the ears here. Draw that navel in towards your spine. Curl your toes under. Shift back, down dog. Begin to walk those feet forward, come into Uttanasana, forward fold. Press down through the feet. Inhale, arms come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold forward. As you inhale, bring yourself up halfway. Exhale, fold. Step those feet back to plank. Hug the elbows in. Slowly lower. Chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms rising to cobra pose. Curl your toes under, shift back and rest. So here you can rest in 
child's pose or downward facing dog, whichever feels restful to you. Come back to that balanced breath if it's gotten away. Just check in with how you're feeling and feel what it is you're feeling. Don't feel like you have to change it. You feel what you feel in any given moment. Start to walk the feet forward, coming to Uttanasana, forward fold. Press down through those feet, arms start to lift when they're in line with the ears. Use the core, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold forward. As you inhale, bring yourself up halfway. And as you exhale, fold forward, step back to plank. Slowly lower down, chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising bhujangasana. Curl the toes under, shift back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Step the feet forward, Uttanasana. Press down through those feet, inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold forward. As you inhale, come halfway up. As you exhale, fold, step the feet back. Slowly lower down. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising. Curl the toes under, shift back. Step the feet forward, Uttanasana. Press down through those feet, inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Close your eyes. Standing in Tadasana, just let those hands or thumbs just gently press against the chest. You can feel that heart beating, working to pump that blood through your body. Come back to your balanced breath if it's gotten away from you. So we're going to take a nice wide stance on the mat. So the feet are pointing, or the toes are pointing forward. We'll come up on the heel of the left foot, toes turn in slightly. Come up on the heel of that right foot, toes turn out 90 degrees. Bring your arms parallel to your mat. Gaze out over the right fingertips. Start to reach the right fingertips towards the space in front of you. But what I don't want you to do is jut out your hip to reach forward. You're going to keep the hips where they are and reach the fingertips. Then as you exhale, begin to tip to your right. Utita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. So here we're gazing up at the fingertips. If that makes you dizzy, you can look straight ahead or down at the floor. Make sure that front knee is not locked and breathe. Press down through the feet. Use that left hand to bring yourself back up. As you exhale, lower your arms, bring the feet to parallel. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hinge forward, Prasarada Padottanasana. Wide-legged forward fold. Relax the head and neck here. Place your hands on your hips. Press down through the feet, unhinge, coming back up. So we still have our wide-legged stance. Come up on the heel of that right foot, toes turn in slightly. Come up on the heel of the left foot, toes turn out 90 degrees. Arms parallel to your mat. Woo! Gaze out over those left fingertips. Take a breath in and then begin to reach those left fingertips towards the space in front of you. And as you exhale, 
tip to the left, Uttita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. So now you're going to take both hands and place them on either side of that left foot and step back to plank. Hug those elbows in, slowly lower down, chaturanga. Sweep the chest through the arms, rising bhujangasana. Curl the toes under, shift back, adho mukha, shwanasana, downward facing dog. Start to walk the feet forward, coming to Uttanasana, forward fold. Press down through the feet, inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. We're going to move right into tree pose, and then after tree pose, we're going to do another balance posture. And if you have a strap, you might want that nearby, but again, you don't need it 100%. So, feet femur width apart. Hands come to your heart. Knees are soft, always. Shift the weight to that left foot. Really let the weight sink into the foot. Imagine growing deep roots. The right foot becomes light. You can press that against your ankle, your calf, or your upper inner thigh. You just want to skip the knee here. So you're pressing your foot into your leg, pressing your leg into your foot. Keep a nice tall spine. Find a gazing point, something not moving. And just allow your gaze to soften there. Watch the breath flow in through the nose and out through the nose. And if you feel stable as you inhale, arms reach up. And then your tree branches can grow. And it's okay to wobble and sway, that's what trees do. And if you fall out of the pose, you just try it again. Bring your hands back together, down in front of the heart. You're going to lower your right foot, shake those legs out a little bit. Come back to Tadasana, hands at the heart. Soft knees. Now we'll begin to shift the weight to that right foot. Again, imagine growing those roots. Left foot becomes light. You can press the foot against the ankle calf or upper inner thigh. Again, we just skip our knee. So you're going to push the foot into the leg, push the leg into the foot. Find that gazing point, something not moving. Watch the breath. If you feel stable as you inhale, arms reach up and those tree branches can grow. So this side is a little harder for me. This is my bad knee. And when we have an injury um, in the leg, or in the arm or wherever, it can create a neurological block. So it's harder for the signal to get from my brain to the bottom of my foot because I have this knee thing going on. So you may find you have a side that's easier, a side that's harder, and it could be from an old injury or something like that. So go ahead and lower that left foot. You can shake out the legs. And now we're going to try the other balance posture. So first I'll show you with the strap and then I'll show you without. So this is similar to one of the uh, leg lifts that we did earlier laying on our back. So you'll place the strap around the ball of the left foot. And if you don't have a strap, just hold tight and I will teach you without the strap in a second. I actually prefer without the strap with this pose. So. You're gonna place your right hand on your right hip, strap is in the straps are in the left hand. As you inhale, you're going to just draw your left knee towards your chest. Then you're going to open that left leg up out to the left and then extend through the heel. So you've got your strap to hold on to here. So now I'm going to show those without a strap what to do. So if you're Practicing with a strap, just keep holding it. If you need to come out and take a break, no problem. So you're gonna draw the left knee to the chest and then take the peace fingers, grasp the big toe. Here, you're going to press your knee into your elbow, elbow into the knee. Then open the knee up to the left. 
Next, you'll extend through the heel, straightening the leg. And if you'd like, you can extend your right arm out nice and long as well. So you can either use the strap or not. Woo! I always say have fun with these types of poses. So let's draw the knee in. Bring it back to face the front of the room. You can lower it to the ground. Shake out the legs. We'll move to the other side. So if you're using the strap, use the strap. If not, you'll use your peace fingers. So we'll draw the right knee in. If you're not using the strap, grab the peace fingers, or grab the big toe with the peace fingers. Press the knee into the elbow, elbow into the knee, and then open up the knee to your right. Extend through the heel. Focus on your breath. If you'd like, you can extend that left arm out to the side as well. Breathe here. Good job. Bend the knee. Bring it to face the front of the room once again. Lower it to the ground. If you're using the strap, you can place it to the side. And then we will all come to stand at the top of the mat. I've got some goodies today. Forgot I had this one here. So we get another fun balance posture. So for this one, dancer, we're going to bend the right knee. Reach around and see if you can grasp the top of the foot. So you're just going to hold it here. And if this is where you stay, that's perfectly fine. We're getting a nice quad stretch here. As you inhale, the left arm reaches towards the sky. And then as you exhale, you're going to hinge from the hips. Then lift that right thigh away from the floor as you press the foot into the hand. Breathe here. Slowly start to unhinge, lower the right foot, lower that left hand. Shift the weight to the right foot. Bend the left knee. Grasp that left foot with the left hand. As you inhale, that right arm lifts. As you exhale, hinge forward. Lift the left thigh away from the mat as you press the foot into the hand. Breathe here. Slowly bring yourself back up. Lower that left foot. Bring your hands to your heart. As you inhale, arms reach up. As you exhale, fold forward, hinging from those hips. Inhale, halfway up to a flat back. Exhale, fold. Step the feet back to plank. This time, we're going to hug those elbows in and lower all the way down to the ground. You can cross the forearms in front of you, rest your forehead, bend your knees, and let those legs sway side to side. Roll over onto your back, hug the knees into the chest, and then you're going to place the soles of the feet on the ground. Bring the arms out like a T, palms face the ceiling. Cross that left ankle over the right thigh. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, begin to tip the legs over to the right as you roll to the pinky toe side of the right foot. Inhale, coming back up. And as you exhale, tip the legs to the left as you roll to the big toe side of the right foot. Inhale, back up, and then just continue moving with your breath, rolling from one side of the foot to the other.
The next time the sole of the right foot is flat on the mat, pause there. Lower the left foot. And then you'll cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Take a breath in. As you exhale, begin to tip the legs to the left, rolling to the pinky toe side of that left foot. Inhale back up and continue tipping to the right, rolling from one side of the foot to the other. The next time the sole of the left foot is flat on the mat, pause there, lower the right foot. Hug those knees into the chest. Rock gently from side to side. So you're going to take the peace fingers of both hands, grasp your big toes, extend through those heels, make a nice big V with the legs. If you'd like to rock side to side here, you can do that. Start to draw the legs together, arms come together. Lower the legs down to the mat as those arms lower up overhead. Take a nice full body stretch here. Bend your knees, placing the soles of the feet on the mat, and then let the soles of the feet come together as those knees open up out to the sides for Supta Baddha Konasana, Supine Bound Angle Pose. We're going to practice the dynamic version of this pose. Essentially, you'll be taking three breaths to bring the knees all the way up. And I'll talk you through that. So you can have your arms wherever they're comfortable. As you inhale, begin to bring the knees up just one third of the way. Pause here and exhale. On the second inhale, the knees come up another third. Pause here, exhale. On the third inhale, knees come all the way up. And on the third exhale, soles of the feet come together, knees open up out to the sides. We'll do that two more times. Inhale one, knees come up one third of the way. Exhale here. Inhale two, knees come up another third. Exhale here. Inhale three, knees come all the way up. Exhale three, knees open up out to the sides, soles of the feet together. I'll let you do this last one on your own. When you finish, you can just hug those knees into the chest. Once you hug those knees in, you can rock from side to side. We're going to begin to transition into Shavasana. And then as a reminder, after Shavasana, we're going to be doing a guided um, emotional, re emotional awareness relaxation. I'm a little relaxed right now. So feel free to grab anything that you need for Shavasana, socks, sweater, drink of water, whatever it may be, blanket, and then take the time to move things out of the way that you don't need. Once you have everything that you need, oh, and some good news, this guided relaxation will also be laying down, so you'll be able to continue to relax in your supine position during that. So go ahead and just relax. Let the whole body just sink into the floor. You can let your feet flop open. Relax your jaw by creating a space between the top and bottom rows of teeth. 
Let the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth and let your eyes just rest in their sockets. Resist the urge to make subtle movements. Let your natural breath take over. Rest in Shavasana. Slowly start to deepen your breath. 
Becoming aware of the room once again, becoming aware of your body. You can make any subtle movements that feel good to you, like wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes. You can rotate through the wrists and the ankles and turn the head gently from side to side and then stretch through the arms and the legs like you're just waking up. Begin to deepen the breath and start to make any subtle movements that might feel good. You can wiggle those fingers, wiggle the toes, rotate through the wrists and the ankles and turn that head gently from side to side. Stretch through the arms and the legs like you're just waking up. Nice, full body stretch. And then roll to the right side in the fetal position and we'll stay there for a few breaths. Keeping your eyes closed if you'd like, use the arms to bring yourself back up to a comfortable seated position. Once you get there, you can bring the hands to the heart in Anjali Mudra, prayer position. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. As you go through your day, just see if you can take a few moments and just check in with how you're feeling at that moment and allow yourself to feel it. Sometimes it's helpful to do things like we did in this relaxation, feeling where you feel certain feelings in the body, how it feels, because sometimes we can misinterpret what we're feeling or we can be acting a certain way because we're not really paying attention to what we're feeling. And remember, it's normal to feel. It's good to feel. And we all feel the good and the bad. Thank you again for sharing your practice with me today. I look forward to seeing you again on Tuesday morning. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know. My email is danaopal at gmail.com. And if there's a particular practice that we've done that you've enjoyed, slowly but surely, we're getting all of these videos up on YouTube for you so you can watch them at any time. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. May you have ease of well-being. Namaste.